Well, uh, for me as well, a very good morning. Um, it's still morning, shortly before lunch. I think it's uh, definitely a better slot than in the afternoon because I've brought along some hefty food to digest um, the digital uh, uh, information supply chain. And we will drill a little deeper. The intention of this lecture is actually to present an approach. You might wonder um, why it does for you and your customers uh, do such a lecture? Well, we simply want to show you um, uh, the methods that uh, companies can use. We're system integrated and we developed this uh, method around eight years ago and we apply it to big groups of companies, both in print and e-commerce, infrastructure, I in Kubernetes uh, infrastructure, API management and other things. But we also work with SMEs and um, I've brought along a software evaluation as, exa as an example. And so far, the agenda, my agenda, uh, is to present our perspective, our approach, how to go about such a project. And then I want to talk to you. So um, uh, intermediate questions are wanted. So be brave, uh, shout loud, and uh, that's OK for me. Just briefly, who am I? Who are we? For you and for your customers, we uh, um, started in Switzerland originally. We uh, have 18 sites in seven countries and actually look after digital digitalization, digital change. Um, we're system agnostic, you might say, PIM, MDM, shop management, content management, translation management, print, whatever. Everything related, um, we build the digital information supply chain because the actual physical supply chain already exists. We look after the digital side to it. So all of the data existing around the products in your company with you or in retail companies, in manufacturing companies or other companies that uh, somehow have to do with data. We have eight areas uh, or units, of course. Everything we do is cloud-based. And I will not be talking about G chat, D, uh, GPT and AI that this is necessary, sorry. But uh, I guess there's lots to be heard about this in other lectures. Today, it's about uh, contemporary business, the methods. How do I proceed to solve a problem? My name is Axel Helbig. I'm one of the CEOs. Uh, we don't have a big boss. We have CEOs for various sites uh, who decide together where we're headed. Um, and we're relatively small. We're, we have 250 people. You can imagine we have 18 sites. In Greece, it's five. In Australia, it's 12. So we're more of a boutique than a big uh, Accenture or Deloitte. We focus on other things. But you've grown nicely. Yes, we have indeed. Um, I uh, will introduce you to the exploded view, which is one method from our toolbox. And this is what I want to kick off with. If you have any questions, as I said before, you can ask them right away, clarification questions or whatever. You know this gentleman, I suppose. Uh, nothing to do with Chet GPT, but he is very important for us. He is uh, he was uh, Leonardo da Vinci because he did many things that you don't do. Um, he you don't cut up people uh, at least not in in dark back rooms. But the interesting thing is that he actually made in interesting things that uh, b uh, brought about a lot of insights. Nobody else had to cut up people until the 17th of 18th century. Um, nobody knew this, and he also developed the exploded view um, um, that our method is based on because um, uh, he had various parts produced by various carpenters he, and he actually assembles them and nobody actually understood the secret about his lifting machine. And this is why we said if we can use this um, exploded view like in, in for an oil pump for instance um, which is a very complicated if not even complex I know that there's a spring plate in front of the washer and that is mounted in front of the circlip. So an exploded view explains many things so much better than having to take this all apart because this is visual and visual things are very powerful and this is why we said well a company whether it's a retail company or manufacturer is also very complex. And we will simply explode its view. We will break this company uh, down into a six uh, layer model. So we develop a landscape, a landscape uh, for customers, representing customer and customer layers. We talked about B2B and B2C upstairs. 
so maybe there's also um, a, a tile for potential employees or for partners or whatever and you can also see that this is a transparent tile so you can hardly impact it but you have lots of uh, influence on the experience layer for instance because um, these uh, this includes the touch points uh, you have there are 128 touch points um, and there's the channel cards that contains all of these touch points and then you can look at these touch points product data a uh, price data for instance customer data whatever but there's quite a number of them and these toy touch points are not only uh, um, uh, they do not simply exist but they are created by departments marketing production departments product management etc and they use processes and systems uh, uh, that is assets it can also be um, a machinery but in the IT world it's the IT systems the PIM systems or the translation systems uh, with which uh, data uh, are managed at the end of the day and this this data is then saved in the data layer so this is nice uh, to look at um, you can now see how this is structured but it is pretty abstract you can see a few little persons and arrows that could mean these are um, processes the SAP consultant is happy now because everything revolves around processes but there's much more to it many things uh, that are more complicated surrounding this and this is why we said we, let's simply say this is a model looks nice six layers funny but this is not the reality and the good thing about the model is and this is why we're introducing you to it you can apply reality to this model the reality looks like this more blurred in most cases because the model is not the reality but it helps to create an understanding and it also helps uh, to develop and design the to be state in the future this is why we're saying okay let's uh, say we do a model of the as is situation at the bottom and then we apply um, reality to this model which is maybe a little blurred but we can describe it and then we actually try to develop this into a D to be model so we make assumptions these are the targets uh, and the reality uh, is then reality is then developed based on various assumption of the to be model across the various stages and it's also important to see that the various stages um, have certain priorities in the timeline when I only look at one software then it's relatively difficult to implement this software but when I see the whole picture the whole uh, data world or system world of a company so to speak then I can see interrelations and dependencies that I cannot ignore I cannot install a shop system without any preparations a BAM system a translation system or a PIM system and you quickly realize when you actually work with this to be model at certain you have to uh, proceed in stages you could see that the digital change the change uh, the change process um, uh, um, is the seek the consequence of a blurred reality that you do a projection again like a model for a to be scenario a future scenario this can be in five years or ten years time and then I create uh, interim stages. If this is my five or ten year to be model, then there are various time stages in between. Why do you do such a thing? Of course, you want to uh, customize the message for the people. You have to communicate with many, many people in the company, people who want to understand why am I doing this or that. So there are two basic questions to be answered. How can an organization come up with uh, value-added models? It's not that easy because there's a lot of scope for interpretation. Each person interprets a situation differently because they're more or less involved. And the other question that arises, how can an organization change successfully? Um, successful change. 
this is uh, <laughs> a paradox on what is successful change, how fast, uh, what are the uh, constrictions or constraints or restrictions surrounding it. And this is why we have refined this model. Uh, roughly eight years together with uh, the Bosch company, with the first IT structure, the central IT later with power tools and other units of Bosch. And then we said, okay, we have to be even more um, uh, precise. This is probably cool to have such a model for stakeholder communication to make them understand, but they really want to know more. What is the problem? At which layer? On which of the landscapes or maps is the problem? This is why we said, okay, we will take a conceptual uh, approach, the six layers, and then we will start drawing. You have a use case, so you want to create a training program. This takes a software to do, say, trainings, the, the trainings management system. This is just by way of example, just imagination. Uh, what does it take? A system, certain data, training data, contact data, d contact details, and what are, and there are certain processes I need. There are certain people in the organization. I need print material, touch points, channels, in order to reach out to a specific target group to offer this training. So we have a very trivial case of a training platform for a company. And then I actually get down to the detail. So I need a learning management system. This is logically on the systems uh, layer, the asset layer. This is because it's a software product. And then uh, there are other things. Um, uh, procedural things, for instance, a process that doesn't work well uh, because uh, the company already tried out certain um, availability uh, checks uh, because it did, but it didn't work out because uh, the people couldn't be planned well. And this is why there was a critical um, issue on the performance layer found. And then we apply various modeling tools to move from the conceptual to a detailed model and that, that becomes increasingly elaborate with more and more details, enriched so to speak. And you can see a small selection of so-called modeling tools here. Uh, for you, uh, this is uh, um, definitely known. And there's the customer journey, the use case, uh, um, there's organization models, c uh, capacity models, the customer journey system, uh, uh, maps, uh, everything you've probably already seen and that are applied as tools, but in a certain sequence because there's a correlation between the tool that I start with, the team I start with, the sequence, I process the results. So it starts, also starts, with uh, a use case diagram because uh, I want to model the as is state. Which people in the company, this is very small, you can't read it at the back of the room, I suppose, but there are certain people uh, who form bottlenecks or are responsible for various areas in the company. Say so yellow would be the product master data, then customer master data, and there are, under, there are the print master data. So with such a use case diagram, you can quickly and easily show uh, the bottlenecks the core, the uh, interdependencies where certain responsibilities or processes are concentrated. Let's just pick one little process, and this little process already shows it's about the uh, the uh, microsite or news campaign. There is one person in the organization. There is one process, the microsite um, management, and there is an asset, and this would be the system with which this is done. This would be a very trivial example for this for such a process. And when I drill down even further, you can see that the various tools are weighed differently. You can do a market segmentation when you talk about CUSPers, for instance, but you can also do a channel map to see which uh, insights have already been gained maybe by external agencies or anal analytics companies. Then the organization models, how are we structured, in which countries, uh, which markets are actually managed by, in which countries, are there other segments, for instance, like in the US. This is all done on the organizational level. And here are further fields down. What is the challenge? How do we go about this in concrete terms?
We uh, have to do a software evaluation, for example. So these are the six layers. How would you approach this? Question e-commerce platform. I simply picked it. Could be anything else. Typically, we first uh, create the as-is situation. So across all uh, layers, we produce a an image that the whole project is committed to. This is probably one a one-day workshop. And then you start saying, well, in this image we do a uh, customer journeys, we do research, there is a channel landscape. And then you start uh, interviewing employees, clarify uh, responsibilities, uh, do draw up use case diagrams. And across the various layers or maps of the company, you have to travel to bring the complete information together. The interesting thing about the exploded view is that everybody is aware on which layer the discussion takes place. It's very problematic in companies when you actually discuss processes or the organizational process, whereas others speak about uh, processes. Uh, and their responsibilities. So breaking down the six layers creates a lot of clarity and satisfaction, I'd say, uh, amongst uh, departments because it is always clear on which level or layer we're currently speaking. Then the system architecture arises, so we're jumping through the various worlds from top to bottom. And this is also the timeline that you follow. Sooner or later, the process becomes paralyzed, uh, par uh, parallelized. Uh, you develop a, an information model. And this is the fundamental thing that you um, that all of the information uh, is introduced into one structure that is understandable for each and every one. But this is done through consecutive workshops, right? Yes, exactly. Th this is uh, a process of six, eight to 12 weeks because the target is we need an e-commerce platform. So this is still the example I chose. So all of the things you do are done considering that they want to have an e-commerce platform for Europe or for Germany. It makes no difference uh, for that matter. And then at the end, you create an image. And this this view uh, is must be so mature that you can actually uh, convert it into a document. In this information model, you describe exactly the dis definitions. Um, uh, the definition of a book, this is difficult in publishing house because they're copies, they're manuscripts. Um, what is a book? So you have to lay down the definitions first. And from there, uh, you have the user story mapping. So does what we've come up with really fit what we wanted to do originally? And then you create the document. It would be an RFP uh, document. And from this uh, document, uh, we become very concrete because you want to buy the platform. You don't want to produce it yourself. And then you've got a documentation of the whole process we've just seen. Then certain requirements are included in a JIRA board, for instance. And then um, this says, well, this is uh, um, the customer journey is this. We have a channel that has this and this. So a very structured approach. Everything is included uh, in this document. And then in the JIRA board, the uh, concrete use cases are uh, f uh, formulated. Uh, relevances are uh, inserted, then a sequence or um, there are certain dependencies that we need to consider for the rollout later. And from there, the next step is the uh, score sheet where you concretely enter well, we, when we have a provider, which solution candidate one to which parameters are important. So we draw this out from the requirements to produce a spreadsheet that actually features um, uh, the, uh, uh, the the certain requirements. For, uh, this is an example, and this is a voting um, so of the possible scores uh, this company has reached out of uh, 500 possible points, uh, 320. So this company is the midfield. And based on the various uh, user stories, uh, you would then say, 
we have customer servers or uh, promotion part there's certain ratings that are applied to say these are the parameters that are of importance to us we've rated them weighed them and this results in the pro and con chart here and in this quadrant model for instance how strong is this provider and data fusion journey analysis etc these are parameters that are more commerce driven this would be driven in pim or in mdm would it, it would be different well once we're done with this then there is a cost view as well how much is it um, because uh, you uh, ask for quotes, system integrator, do you have a partner or do you work by yourself? Software providers prob probably have a service department. Do you want this or don't you want this? Or would you rather go for a system integrator? Some some are in the room. We're our, one of those. And this then results the total in the total view. So um, you have a software decision and once you've actually uh, got the software decision, you've only got the software decision. So we've gone through all of the layers though and on the software layer we took a decision but this decision interestingly enough impacts all of the other layers above and this is the message the decisive message when I do something and look at software in an isolated way then I could actually end up in trouble if you exclude a level 100% in your view then this is automatically a bottleneck there won't be any information it will fail. <coughs> the project will fail when you exclude one lever. We've we've tried this out several times. Um, so you have to look at all of the levels. You have to look at the uh, customer. We're also looking from um, uh, top to bottom and then actually build it up from bottom to top. But there is not the one leading system or leading strategy. The views, uh, perspectives from the customer view from top to bottom and um, the other view our view from bottom to bottom up yes please we all participate in such invitations to tender oh really <laughs> and one thing that i often said in consulting processes was the following i've rarely uh, experienced that uh, such projects fail uh, because of technical issues but they often fail um, caused by the social component how do you factor in the uh, chemistry between the manufacturer and the uh, uh, system integrator I I, I think it's super, this uh, project, but what I was missing was the chemistry. Well, the beauty about this is when I've developed a, uh, a consistent understanding about the so-called information model, when I know um, what I'm talking about, when I define a thing, when I'm in the same room with uh, marketing or product managers, then they already have different images in their heads in terms of the terms. This is why it's brutally helpful to uh, share the same corporate view and everybody knows, well, we have this channel here, but the data comes from there. So why am I showing this here today? I am convinced that uh, this actually makes um, a stakeholder uh, conversations succeed. Uh, whereas in the past somebody said, well, we wanted to do an app first. Now we're talking about a web shop. This is what uh, this uh, is all about, that you provide confidence and safety. And when I talk about it, and when I actually paint it on a flip shot, this is all cool. This is great. You can do it, but it's not sustainable. And the sustainable thing about this approach is um, the, the poster in, in 04. Um, people, get up, uh, um, get your chairs out of the way. Let's say we want to do an app uh, for, for the agriculture cultural sector. Um, this is a maze uh, um, app. They want to have a maze configurator. There are 40,000 items. There is the farmer at the top who wants to have this maze configurator. So what do I need in terms of process and data and persons involved to produce a maze configurator? This is a trivial little app, but once everybody understood it, um, we're de developing a serial configurator. Now, ooh, all systems are involved. Maybe we should talk to each other. This really helps helps to create relations and to improve the stakeholder con, um, communication. 
t what about the timing? Ooh. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> well, um, the whole thing uh, can also be done in a more complex way. Uh, there, there are two R tags uh, with uh, the white papers in German and English until when you still un stay until the end. But with you can see uh, that uh, this also helps um, to simply explain matters to the management. You can actually sketch out use cases. You can also create uh, oh, um, uh, you know, zero posters. Bosch actually uh, had them in their offices, and when I have various uh, business units in Bosch. There are, of course, interdependencies. So when I say there's a Hornbach, there's Bosch, and there's the final customers, there are independencies between suppliers, wholesalers, and retailers. And you can show it ever so well because there are interactions between these various towers. And then almost real, this is, um, well, yeah, I'll skip it. I'll skip it. it is uh, process mining. Um, you do process mining on each level and this can also be in real time and dynamically but this is a different quality of processes. But what you see here is uh, the connection between three uh, implementations, uh, different implementations of the same company. Uh, so you work with different people uh, and then you reconnect uh, between the web, the CRM and the MDM. What's important is to actually sit around the table time and again. This is no longer detached. This is a digital information supply chain. It's like a supply chain for real bananas from Brazil. It has worked for 40 years. Great. Uh, but we haven't had that amount of time for information. And this is why it is important to manage such views here. Well, you can also see that you can also create parameters. How uh, do the various systems develop over years? So where have we achieved an optimization? This is the target, the blue bar, and then 17, 18, 19, you can see that you're approaching this. You can also create measurable parameters to say what uh, uh, to say how has this developed over time, and when you have done a projection to be in 25, you can measure how far you're still apart from from this uh, target and whether you need uh, changes. This is why modeling tools are really important. This is just for the to be. Wh which tool do I use in which uh, um, sequence, uh, in which order, in order to do the uh, uh, to be scenario, to communicate with stakeholders to decide and then simply do it. And on the other hand, I've got the management tools, SWOT analyses and other things mm, to really put it into practice in a project the few freelancers here, some expertise, or do we turn it into a program? And as schematically, you can see as soon as you have a real program, you touch all of the layers and the levels. If you only do a project on two layers, then get an expert with expertise. Um, they only focus on the SAP layer. They're not interested. They're only focusing on the system layer. But when you have six layers in a company, that this is difficult. It simply does not work out. So think in terms of program over business development and then the ecosystem. This would be the interaction between companies that cooperate. Then this is, of course, even more complex. Well then, thanks very much.